This is a Lancia Delta Integrale Evo 2, a car that just about everyone seems to love. And with prices recently having gone absolutely crazy, it needs to be pretty good. But it is, isn't it? After all, you could come up with any number of categories for cars and the Integrale 2 would feature very highly. Best rally cars of all time? Well, with six back-to-back -back championship titles, this surely has to be up there. Most brilliant hatchback? Well, it's got all the right ingredients. Most striking Italian car ever? Not a bad shout. Best thing to come out in the 1990s? Well, it's red and it's not a Ferrari, but it's pretty amazing, isn't it? It's a car that everyone who drives it falls in love with, so surely nobody could have a bad word to say about it, right? Wrong. This car is a total bastard. Now, Ben actually owns two of these, so I can't blame this one entirely. However, the first time I tried to review an Integrale of his, the brakes failed, and it tried to put me in a hedge. Not his fault, of course, his fleet is very well maintained, but these things can and will happen. The second attempt was in this exact car, and during that drive I felt the suspension seemed rock hard and the engine a little unexciting. So it went off to well-renowned specialist Tank Barrett, who said that there were indeed problems with the engine, it wasn't making anywhere near the amount of boost that it should, and the suspension did have an issue. What was it? Tires is in fact the answer. This car was running on Yokohama AD08R S's, and those are incredibly stiff. Cars of this era were designed to have quite a bit of flex in their sidewall, so it's now got these Continentals on, and I'm told it drives much better. Oh, it also makes full boost now too. Not wishing to condemn the car based on bad information, I am here for a third time to try and give the car the best shot of redemption that I possibly can. And before we take it out to see if she is indeed as good as everybody else thinks, I thought that I would talk you through the history of the car, because you see, this is the very last chapter in a long story that began in 1979. The original Delta was a very successful car, one 1980 European Car of the Year, and in its first two years of production shifted 100,000 units. In 1983, the Delta HF joined the lineup, HF standing for High Fidelity, and this was their stab at the then burgeoning GTI hot hatch marketplace. It featured a turbocharged engine, but still front wheel drive. In 1985, the Delta lineup grew further with the introduction of the HF Turbo, replacing the HF, and more significantly, the S4. Now, although it may have looked a bit like a regular Delta, the S4, in fact, was anything but. It was a pure competition bred race car with a mid mounted fire breathing engine and all wheel drive. This was their Group B racer, and about 200 road going Stradale versions were built purely for homologation reasons. These days, as you might expect, they are incredibly expensive and hard to find. And the S4 was a revolutionary car, but unfortunately is also one of the vehicles responsible for the tragic ending of Group B. In 1986, you saw the introduction of the first regular road-going Delta with all-wheel drive, the HF Turbo four-wheel drive. Then, in 87, the Integrale nameplate finally appeared, being a car that was designed to get this car into the new rally regulations that were replacing Group B. It began as an Integrale with eight valves and then 16, and at some point during those cars began to grow these now famous arch extensions. 1991 saw the introduction of the first Integrale Evolution model, with the second coming in 1993, this particular car being registered on the 1st of January of that year. The difference between the two, well this one had a catalytic converter, a few cosmetic enhancements and slightly larger wheels. Power, about 215 brake from its turbocharged four-cylinder. Price, well, too much as it happens, because by the time this car came out, the public were just about getting to know the new breed of Japanese rally car, and they seemed to offer a lot more for a lot less. So this was always destined to be a very rare and special car. To look at with its bulging arches, its sharp lines and the adjustable spoiler set here to a very sensible position, the car is utterly magnificent. Now in truth it's actually more Fiesta than Focus size these days, but it is still fairly heavy, weighing over 1300 kilos, which is a lot. And there isn't really much in the way of amazing exotic materials under the skin of this one. 
The interior is fabulous in a way that only Italian cars ever could be. The regular Evo 2 had this as the sole option, beige Alcantara, with these amazing Recaro bucket seats that I love, and this beautiful Momo Corsa steering wheel, which is a real genuine highlight. Behind that, you have these brilliant and somewhat iconic yellow and black dials that are really hard to read and use because they go different ways and aren't exactly the most legible, but they do look good. That is kind of important, isn't it? Even this little gear shifter down here seems to have a little notch cut out of it, so it fits in your hand just that much better. It's all full of so much promise. Now that interior does creak and flex like an old warship when you're going over any sort of bump in the road, but when the car looks this good, do you really care? It is a rally car after all. And interestingly, they were available in only the three colors of standard, this red, blue, and black. Now I know you'll be thinking, James, I've seen loads of yellow ones, what are you talking about? Well, there were no fewer than seven special edition Evo 2s which brought with them some new and interesting colours, like the green Verde York or the Martini liveried cars. My favourite though is the Lancia Dealers Collection Special Edition, which came in a slightly darker metallic red with beige leather interior. And that car was special because it was limited only to Lancia dealers. That makes sense. Gotta love the Italians, right? That all sounds pretty decent, doesn't it? I know what you're thinking. James, what is your problem with this car? Well, to explain that, we need to take it out on the road. Now here's the thing about legendary Italian cars. Most of them that I've met have turned out to be quite special in one way or another. It's very, very rare that an Italian car is the real rounded, everyday proposition that you might find with, say, its German rivals. But there'll always be things that the Italians do just that much better in a way that the Germans never can match. They are rarely jacks of all trades, they are generally masters of a very few. And if you're in a certain mood, there will be nothing that comes close to the experience of a real proper Italian car. But when I drove the Integrale first time round, before the brakes gave out on me, there really wasn't anything that stood out as being particularly noteworthy. The gear change, I feel, is very sloppy, and although it's not a, a bad shift to use, you can certainly do the business, it just isn't particularly good. I know I'm not used to shifting with my right hand, but I've driven enough cars left-hand drive to know good from bad, and this isn't good. Similarly, the chassis just didn't seem to excite or engage me, and on the second drive, I found that this car, which is equipped, granted, with Japanese market final edition springs, was simply punishingly firm. It was just unpleasant. The steering didn't really seem to have the sort of electric feel that I would hope a 1990s Italian rally car might. Steering is a genuine highlight in my Celica, and the Delta in Grali you'd have thought would be much better than that, yet it just fell some way short. The engine similarly just seemed to be serviceable, not exciting or dramatic, not even particularly good sounding. Perhaps that's in part due to the fact that this car is running a stock exhaust, but it also turns out that this car wasn't making the power it should either, so I'm hoping that this time round it may be a little bit better. I did get some glimpses of brilliance in that last drive, but overall the whole car left me feeling very disappointed. I'd met a hero and he turned out to be rather unpleasant and difficult to get along with. I am happy to report that at low and medium speeds, this car is somewhat improved. That simple change of tyres really has improved the ride somewhat. It's still a very firm car. For whatever reason, the final Integrales were sold just to the Japanese, and their roads are notoriously smooth. Even so, I think this car is perhaps firmer than need be. The Integrale is legendary of having this super long travel rear suspension, and I don't quite understand the logic in having that and then putting springs quite this firm on the car. But 
but there is a lot to like about it. The view out is spectacular, that big, lovely bonnet. You can see a bit of those fantastic wheel arch extensions, and the seats are magnificent. The steering wheel itself, although it's not giving me a lot of feedback, is rather nice to hold, and people love the Integrale. I mean, this thing gets looks and stares like very few other cars that I've driven. Now the reason that it's one of a pair owned by my good friend Ben, whose Instagram you can follow here, is a simple one. He got his arm twisted into buying this one a few years ago and he paid what seemed like an awful lot of money at the time. As it turned out, that seemed to be a very wise decision to have made because these are now worth about triple what he paid. You're going to be spending anywhere between 50 and 80 thousand pounds for an Integrale, depending on condition, specification, mileage, etc., etc. And with them being that expensive, can they possibly be worth it? Well, let's stop waiting to find out, shall we? Let's turn around, get some clear road, and give this car some stick. turns out it's an incredibly frustrating car. Never have I known a vehicle work so hard to conceal its brilliance. Now where previously the engine just felt flat and somewhere about the 200 horsepower that they claim, now it feels genuinely pokey. These cars apparently do overboost when you plant your foot firmly and this really does pull very keenly. This is actually a quick car, but that's not the main bit that impresses. Oh no, it's what happens to the rest of the package when you really decide to give it some. When I used to work in film, you get very different types of actors, some that are totally serious all the time, others which never seem to take anything that seriously. But the ones that were most impressive were those who were laughing and joking right up until the moment when those two pieces of wood met and the slate was clapped. And all of a sudden, they became that character. That is the kind of person the Integrale would be. a bend, you put your foot down and it adopts an entirely different posture. This isn't even the same car. The whole thing really does come alive. It starts to talk to you, it starts to work with you. And you then find yourself taking liberties with it you don't really think that you should be with somebody else's 60 odd thousand pound toy. this thing can carry around a corner is quite incredible and I'm really starting to have actual fun in this car at long last. But here's the thing, this is a car that works only when you're doing this, when you've engaged hoon mode, because up until seven or maybe even eight tenths, the Integrale just doesn't care. It, it just doesn't, it's just, it simply isn't interested in what you want. It, it just isn't. Until that point, you barely have its curiosity. Yes, certainly don't have its attention. But the moment that it knows you're serious, it gets serious too. It's a riot. But it is deeply flawed. And being on the left-hand side of the car doesn't actually really ruin it. Visibility is so good that it's fine. Overtakes are not particularly easy, of course, but really, this is a car you want to try and find an empty piece of road to properly enjoy. That's why I'm currently driving at 20 mile an hour, because I want to build a bit of a gap ahead to enjoy and sample this car just that bit more. 
It's also an expensive and difficult car to maintain. Some parts can be hard to find, and if you can find them, they can take a while to arrive, and they're not going to be cheap. At least, that was the impression that I got five years ago, and I doubt things have improved. Oh yeah, 4,000 RPM, that engine suddenly comes alive. Look at this, just round. Oh, I'm... That tail end comes around, and you don't care, you just want more. I'm driving this car like a right knobber, because that's what it wants. This is going to get you some serious trouble, this car. <laughs> oh, yes. This is what an Integrale Evo 2 should be like. Finally, at flipping last. Gearbox is still rubbish. They're too expensive. The dashboard looks like it's going to break in half. Very often, I chastise owners of classic cars for not using them anywhere near as often as they should. But this, I would completely forgive somebody if they told me they took it out only six or seven times a year. When the sun is right and the conditions are just so, this is a car that you can enjoy so much more than, say, the Quattro, which actually works really well until about seven or eight tenths and then starts to get a little bit iffy. But this is thoroughly enjoyable. It might have come from the 70s, but actually, Beyond the outdated interior, it does feel like more of a 90s car in the driving experience. In that regard, it is perhaps one of the most Italian of cars, because not only are its talents relatively few, but they are very well hidden, yet when you do find them, it does make it worth it. So what do I think of the Lancia Delta Integrale Evo 2 after all this time? Well, if you said to me you bought one just to look at it, never to drive. I wouldn't blame you. I really, honestly wouldn't. When it comes to the driving though, 20% of the time, it works every time. And when you're in that magic zone, this is quite incredible. The next car up on the list, the Evo 6, that is a car whose talents are far more accessible and it's far more enjoyable more of the time. But if you're in a certain mood, this does deserve the praise that it gets. Maybe not quite all of it. There is my take on the Lancia Delta Integrale Evo 2. My life, it took its time. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Please like, comment below, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you all for the next one. Bye-bye.